Hello, my name's Ben. And my name is Josh. And welcome back to FPL Graduates and welcome back to another video on FPL 2223. Yeah, in today's video, we're going to be talking about the best bench options that are cheap as chips to allow you to get all of these great premium assets. So these guys might not necessarily get all the returns in the world, but they are going to be starting for you and hopefully there if you actually need them. OK, so the first player that we're going to be talking about for the bench options is going to be Nat Phillips. Now, he could be a very good option for Bournemouth. At just four million, it's worth bearing in mind we've gone for the cheaper options, guys, on the bench. Uh, we think it's going to be optimum. Um, and as you can see, he played a lot of games last season for a four million pound defender and even got a few clean sheets. I mean, do we expect Bournemouth to keep a clean sheet here and there, potentially? But he put up some decent stats and is definitely an option to go for. Yeah, of course, Nat Phillips still hasn't signed for Bournemouth as we're recording this, but it's looking very likely, so hence why we put him in there. And if even if he does join any other Premier League team, for £4 million, you can't go wrong. This is what these kind of players are about. It's all about the minutes. If Nat Phillips joins Bournemouth, he's almost certainly going to be a start of them, just like he was at the back end of the Championship last season. So next up, and probably the best defensive £4 million option if the transfer goes through to Nottingham Forest is Nico Williams. Obviously, Played for Fulham last season on loan there. Um, has decided to potentially join Nottingham Forest. 14 starts. He seemed to play pretty well. Two goals and two assists. So he's looking quite attacking, Ben. Did you see much of him last season? Yeah, bits and pieces of him last season. Of course, he didn't sort of play the majority of games for Fulham last year. But he posted some really good numbers considering. Like, um, as you can see on there, two goals and two assists isn't bad at all for a £4 million asset. Um, so I think we can expect him um, to be at the forefront of everyone's mind for that first bench player. OK, so the next one that we've got is Brandon Williams. And it's an interesting one because although sort of in the last couple of weeks, we would have thought, yes, he's going to go potentially to um, a club lower down in the league than Manchester United and get some starts. He recently picked up a big injury that looks like he might be out for a little while. Yeah, so that's definitely going to hamper where he's going in terms of a loan move. Obviously, last season he was at Norwich, did provide some value there if you needed him at that cheap price. So he's one to watch out for. He might be able to get maybe a loan deal into the season, um, obviously, when the transfer window ends. But for now, we're saying probably steer clear as he's picked up an injury literally in the last 24 hours. So next up on our list is Nathan Patterson. So obviously he joined Everton, I think it was last season. And Seamus Coleman is not getting younger. Although Nathan Patterson only really featured in the cup games, we think that this season he's going to see a lot more minutes under Frank Lampard. We know that Frank Lampard loves to embed the youth into his teams. Uh, what's your thoughts, Ben? Yeah, I think he's uh, going to potentially be a really good option as we go further into the season. Uh, we may see Seamus Coleman start the season at right back. But I anticipate that, sort of, like you said, under Lampard, that Patterson could see a lot more minutes going forwards. Um, and it, it's always potentially worth that risk, especially with some of the good fixtures that Everton have, especially from game week three. So, worth considering, but it's just worth keeping an eye, especially on pre-season, on the last pre-season game, to see who Frank Lampard prefers at that spot. So moving into the midfielders now. So we've got three of these. First up is Jacob Murphy of Newcastle. Obviously, Newcastle looking to reinforce their squad this summer. But we think Jacob Murphy could play a decent part of that in terms of minutes. Obviously, 20 sub appearances last season. So maybe not necessarily a starter. But with these sort of players, you're not expecting them to set the world alight, guys. These are guys just to sit on your bench, maybe pick up the odd point or two. And anything else is just a bonus, isn't it, Ben? Yeah, I mean, it's difficult to judge Jacob Murphy as an asset because obviously Newcastle are very much in a transitional phase in the transfer window and with their squad. So we could see those starts and substitutes periods decrease slightly this season compared to last season, simply because Newcastle are sort of getting in a lot of players and there's a high volume of players going in and out of the club at the moment um, because they're just trying to build up their team to sort of compete at the higher levels of the Premier League. So it's worth bearing that in mind for Jacob Murphy. Um, it might be worth looking at potentially other 4.5 million options um, if you want to sort of 
lessen the risk. So next up, we've got a new little player into FPL this season. It's Rome- Romeo Lavia from Manchester City under 23s. He's just signed for Southampton for, I think, £10 million. So investing in the youth there at Southampton, as they always do, and they never tend to get it too wrong, do they, Ben? Yeah, I don't know too much about Lavia, but if he does end up uh, becoming sort of a mainstay in the team for Southampton, he could be a great option going forwards. Um, he sort of, sort of again, it's, it's one that if he starts every game, you know, it's two points in case someone in your team doesn't start. And our final midfielder pick, and by far the best one, we have Andreas Pereira, who's on his way to Fulham. Obviously, spent a little bit of time in United, couldn't really cut the mustard. Been out to Flamengo, where he's played reasonably well. Um, we think he could be a good option and a, almost a certain starter in that Fulham side. Um, he's got a decent shot on him, as we've seen in pre-season almost all the time. Uh, what's your thoughts on Andy Pereira, Ben? Got to keep an eye on him in pre-season, I think. Um, whether he sort of gets the starts that he needs, because... Fulham, they, they have a lot of players in, in the attacking positions that, that can do very well. So, worth keeping an eye on. But the quality of the player is um, is fantastic. And probably the most technically gifted 4.5 million midfielder of the year. Um, so, I think having him in um, relatively low risk for potentially quite a high reward. Um, if sort of that he gets a return maybe in that Brentford game in the first five. So, moving on to forwards, and this one's a slightly different one. So, Sam Greenwood here on screen, you'll probably know that he's a highly owned 4.5 million forward at almost, I think, 25%, if not higher. And one thing that we want to point out is that with the forwards at 4.5 million, there aren't any that are really going to get too many minutes. It's all going to be sub appearances here and there, nothing too major. So, we just want to advise you to maybe not pick Sam Greenwood in particular or any of the highly owned ones. Because if they, if you do pick them and people transfer them out inevitably, they are going to decrease in price, which means your team value is going to go down, which is not ideal. So, yeah, that's basically our advice. What's your thoughts on this, Ben? Yeah, I mean, we could we could see him not play a part at all in, uh, in Leeds' campaign. Um, yeah, he's so highly owned that if you have him, great. But be aware that if he doesn't get minutes early on, um, he could be 4.4, 4.3 million um, in no time at all. So moving to some, not necessarily the cheapest of the cheap, but some decent cheap striking options. We've got Jean-Philippe Mateta. Obviously, last season, a lot of rotation with those Palace forwards. And I think that's why they've priced them very nicely at 5.5 million with him and obviously Edouard. Um, so yeah, last season, five goals, one assist. He seemed to be the main option for uh, Patrick Vieira towards the end of the season. Do you think he's going to be the main one starting this season, Ben? Yeah, I think he's got a better chance of starting. Obviously, there's going to be some sort of rotation because Palace have got a plethora of attacking options at the moment. Um, so it's worth bearing that in mind. But he's got a lot more chance of playing and scoring than uh, than sort of for the 4.5 million options. So for me, it could be better value just to spend that extra 0.5 to guarantee the minutes and the, and the potential to score a few more goals. Yeah, one thing to mention as well is Crystal Palace's fixtures are definitely not the best to start off with. So the next option we'd probably say is a better player to start the season off, and that is Dennis Undab. Obviously, depending on minutes, this guy, we feel like he could be the hidden gem of this season. Last season, he played 33 games in the Pro League in Belgium, scoring 25 goals and getting 10 assists. So a really good campaign for him. We've heard a lot of good things for him about him, sorry. Uh, what's your thoughts, Ben? Is he going to be in your game week one team? Yeah, I mean, at the moment he is. Um, I think, you know, he's a striker that Brighton have been crying out for. He's one that's very clinical in converting his XG chances, um, can score on both feet. So I think at 5.5 million, with the stats that we've seen there, I think he's, he's going to be sort of the best cheap option to go for, especially in that striker department. Yeah, obviously, Neil Malpai and Danny Welbeck coming in at 6.5 million, so a whole million more than Undav. It'll be interesting to see how many minutes he does get. I'm sure there will be rotation there. Obviously, they're not going to just play him all the time. Um, but yeah, like you said, his style really fits that Brighton team, gets loads of assists, links play, scores loads of goals, which is something Brighton have been lacking for years now, let's be honest. So it's going to be an interesting pick to see how he gets started in the Premier League season. 
Okay, so that rounds off our best cheap bench options to go for for your FPL team in 22-23. Let us know what you think. Do you think there's a player that we missed out on that might get some surprise minutes? We've gone through a lot of decent options and we hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please make sure to give it a like. Go and subscribe to us. Go and follow us on all of our, all of our other socials. And as usual, I've been Ben. I've been Josh. And we'll see you guys later. Thank you.